In this video, we will explore techniques to debug soldering on printed circuit boards, specifically surface mount components. Problems with soldering can cause lots of problems down the road. The simplest problem is that the board will simply not turn on. The hardest problem is when everything appears to be working, but something is malfunctioning in your circuit operation. The most common response to this is to suspect the code of the microcontroller, when in fact it could just be faulty soldering connections. Here I have a breakout board for a microcontroller that I'm using and it is partially complete. It contains the microcontroller as well as some peripheral circuitry, bypass capacitors, crystal oscillator and headers for breaking out the pins. The first thing that you want to do after soldering a component like the microcontroller is just a simple visual inspection just to see if you can spot any solder bridges or shorts by eye. If you can't see anything, it's a good idea to still check if there are any shorts just by touching adjacent header pins while using a connectivity check on a multimeter. So on my multimeter, I'll switch it to this mode here, which is the connectivity check, and I'll make it audible as well, so that when I touch the pins together, when I touch the probes together, it's going to make an audible beep, which is going to tell me that there is a connection. And so I'm going to use this first to check for short circuits or solder bridges. So I'm going to touch a pin here on my header and the pin next to it to see if there's a sound. If there's a sound that indicates to me that there is a short circuit or a bridge on my microcontroller pins. And so I can go along here and just touch every two side by side. It's a pretty quick process just to get around every two in a row. For more complicated chips, which are not just like, like this one where you might have a solder bridge between two adjacent pins, but maybe you might bridge more than two adjacent pins, you might want to actually put this on one header and then sweep along to see if you made any, con any connections by accident. And you'll hear an audible beep if you do. So if I touch them together, for example, I'll do this here, that's what you would hear if there was a bridge. Now this is easier to do before you solder in your headers, as you can see here, because once you have your headers, you can't just simply sweep along like that. It would be more difficult. So it's a good idea to do that early. If you've checked that there are no bridges, it's still a good idea to check if you've actually made contact with your microcontroller pins. So to do that, I may touch a header right here and I want to find a pin that is connected to. Now since I've already established that there are no shorts, I can just take this and sweep along the top of the chip here, the pins, until I hear a beep which indicates that there is a connection right here. So this is in fact connected to the pin of the microcontroller. Now something important that I did here was that I'm touching the top of the pins of the microcontroller as opposed to the bottom. If I touch them on the bottom as opposed to the top, I might actually be making contact with the pad as opposed to with the actual pin. Now of course the pad is connected to the breakout headers because that's how I designed this breakout board, but what I really want to check is that the connection is made to the pin itself. And so therefore I'm going to touch the top of these pins as opposed to the bottom. And once again I can sweep through and I find that there is a connection. I can spot check a few of these just to make sure that everything is soldered properly. Now with a breakout board this is relatively a straightforward process but when you have an actual embedded system like this one right here and there are no headers to try to check this becomes a little bit more difficult. Now you still want to check that you've actually made connections from where you expect to where you expect so for example I know that I expect a connection from the microcontroller to this connector right here. So I can check a given pin, so I'll put it right here, and again I'll sweep along the top. And there we go, I found that there is in fact a connection, and if I check my schematic I'll find that that's where I expect it to be. Now sometimes this may be more difficult to do, and it's going to definitely be more difficult if you want to check connections on opposite sides of the board, so you might have components on both the top and the bottom. And in that case, it's useful to use vias to your advantage. So for example, if a signal travels through a via, like this one does right here, I can put the probe into the via and it's going to stay there. It's going to make things easier. And then I can check that it's connected to one side. So here I have a connection. And then instead of checking from the microcontroller to the next part, I'll use the via as the intermediate point since I know the connection is made, and then check the other part that I want to actually check. And I'll sweep along. There we go, and I found it. 
Now, as I said, this is something you would use if you want to check things on the opposite side of the board, but here I just did it on the same side for illustration. So far I've gone through connectivity checks, but you can also check voltage. And so you also would use your multimeter for that, and what you would want to do is to check that there is the appropriate voltage that you expect, but I would recommend not doing this after you've already soldered everything, but rather to do it incrementally. So for example, you would first solder in your power components. So for example, a barrel jack to get power from the outlet or a USB connector to get power from USB and a voltage regulator. Then at that point, plug everything in and check that you're getting the expected voltage at the voltage regulator. Then when you solder in another component, you may want to check the voltage again. And for example, at this point, you might realize that you no longer have the voltage that you expect. Now, had you soldered all of those components at the same time in the beginning, then you might think that you have a faulty voltage regulator, when in fact, it might be the later component th that you soldered that might have caused a short circuit. And so if you first solder everything into your entire system and then start checking components and something is wrong, it's going to be very difficult to pinpoint which one is actually causing the problem. Whereas if you solder things incrementally and check them incrementally, then you're going to have a much easier time debugging. One more thing I want to mention is if you make a mistake in the design of your embedded system, which is probably going to happen just because there are so many things to take into account and mistakes always happen. So for example, suppose that you wanted to connect a pin, let's say over here in the microcontroller, to another pin that's, for example, right here on the side. And you forgot to make that wire on your printed circuit board. You can take a wire and very carefully solder it to that pin and then connect it to the other location where you wanted to actually make the connection. So you can make a little jumper like that. Now, of course, you have to be very careful when you're soldering because the pins are so small, but if you can, try to find a location that's easier to solder to. Maybe you can actually solder to the pad instead of to the pin directly, or maybe this actually goes through a via somewhere and you can solder to the via instead of to the pin itself. This will especially be difficult with pins that are towards the center of the microcontroller because they're so close together. So if you can do that, then do that in order to fix the problem temporarily and make a note of that when you're making a redesign. Same thing if you made a wire that shouldn't be there, you can take an X-Acto knife and actually cut the trace and that will prevent the current from flowing and therefore the circuit will be broken and that's good. And so you can debug things by either soldering in jumper wires or cutting traces as you see fit. Now I would recommend to not immediately make a change in your design and get it manufactured again because the manufacturing process can be lengthy. Instead, play around with the board that you have for at least a couple of days to find as many bugs as you can and then make a redesign and get it manufactured again. Overall, we have seen how to approach the task of debugging an embedded circuit. While this is definitely more difficult than debugging through-hole components on a breadboard, it is not impossible. Neither is it impossible to fix mistakes. In any but the most trivial designs, there are bound to be mistakes. Knowing how to go about finding them is very important for anybody working with such technology. So try these techniques and get comfortable with them, because you will be using them a lot.